I'm going to go over everything you've ever wanted to know about dark under eye circles, how to treat them. Let's go. Before we start, I'm Dr. Park. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And let's start with a little anatomy lesson, shall we? So this is the mid face and you can see that there are several different important ligaments such as the malar ligament, the orbicularis retaining ligament, and also several important fat components like the orbital fat pad and the suborbiculus oculi fat. And there's one important muscle you need to know about which is the orbicularis or oculi muscle. This is kind of in like a circle shape around your eye and it helps to control the movements of your eye like squinting and things like that doesn't control the movements of your eyeball itself, just to be clear. Many things happen as we age. We can get fat loss. We can get loss of the tissues underneath the skin. We can also get fat herniation, meaning the fat goes where it's not supposed to. And we're not even talking about changes in the skin, like wrinkling and also deposition of melanin or even deposition of hemosiderin, which is a breakdown product of hemoglobin or blood. You can also have allergies there, and frequent rubbing can lead to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but I'm getting ahead of myself. All these people have dark, bulging under eyes, but all for different reasons. Patients A and B both have what's called shadowing, which is when you have a little bit of fat herniation, which happens with age, but you still have this tethering of those ligaments we talked about, which leads to this appearance. In A, there's also kind of a thickening of the orbicularis muscle, so you see that accentuated there. Patient C here actually has fluid collecting under the eye, as well as some hemosiderin brown deposition, and that's from breakdown of hemoglobin, or blood. Patient D here actually has some pigment deposition right here in the corner of the eye. So why the heck do we care about the cause? It's because the cause determines the treatment and the treatments are very different. In both examples, A and B up top, the problem is volume loss. And so in A, we actually, not we, I did not do this. The researchers put in hyaluronic acid filler to put back volume. And in B, it was an autologous fat transplant. So they used fat from the patient's own body to put into that area to plump it up. In C, the problem was mainly skin sagging. So this patient underwent laser, and that helps to tighten up the skin as well as the collagen and extracellular matrix underneath. It can also help with pigment deposition superficially as well. D underwent a lower lid blepharoplasty, so this is actually surgery where they remove excess skin, and they also then underwent fat transfer after that to help plump it up too. Those are procedures that you can get to help fix volume loss, fat herniation, or skin laxity. But if you just have straight up pigment deposition, then you'll be looking at something that can help with the effects of pigment. So like hydroquinone, vitamin C, retinoids. If you have dark circles because of the bluish veins underneath your thin under eye skin peeking through, then you would look for something like caffeine, which can help to vasoconstrict and tighten up those vessels. Treatment depends on the cause, as I said. Let me know if you have any questions because this is a lot of info.